If you're looking for a free marathon training plan to guide you through the process of training for your first marathon, then I've got just the thing for you. My name's James Dunn. I'm a sports rehabilitation therapist and running coach from here in the UK, and I've put together this free 16-week marathon training plan to help get you ready for the big day. And today in this video, I want to just walk you through the program really quickly. And of course, you can find a link to the program down in the description. So let's jump into the program itself and take a look. Okay, so we've got the uh, the program. Again, it's fully downloadable, PDF document. And the reason why people fail in their attempts to run their first marathon, a lot of the time it comes down to injury as much as anything else. And this is one of the main reasons why I structure the program the way I have. A lot of marathon plans literally just lay out the mileage and say, right, these are the different sessions you have to do, off you go. They don't pay any attention to the importance of things like strength work. And you can see here, Mondays, Wednesdays, Thursdays, and Saturdays, I've put in blocks for you just to work on a little and often basis through various strength and conditioning exercises alongside the mileage that you're doing. So that's some mobility work, some strength work, some stability work, the sorts of exercises that will make you a stronger runner and ultimately make you more injury proof as a runner. Now, again, you can see in this overview page where I've laid out the place for the strength in the week, but the actual details for those strength exercises, again, you can click the link down here and it'll take you to a place where you can actually download the strength program to go, again, it's free, completely free, alongside your running program. So that is one of the main differentiating points for this program. But of course, on top of this initial mileage overview page, it then goes through week by week by week, and we've got details for every single session what you need to be doing, how you go out, how to go out there and execute those sessions, as well as, of course, as we're going to go through later on in this video, full details for things like pacing, nutrition, all that sort of stuff. Now, let's quickly look at this mileage overview to start with. You can see that I've got on the program four runs per week scheduled. Now, first things first, it is completely possible to train for a marathon on three runs per week rather than four runs per week. This is largely a, a matter of personal preference and the time you want to dictate to your training, as well as, of course, your, your running history. You know, are you coming at this from having done lots of half marathons or are you have you been rolled into your first marathon alongside a friend and you've done a little bit of running but not much and you're perhaps worrying that you haven't got as much of a running background as you need to. If you feel like three runs per week is going to fit better for you, then my suggestion is to drop one of these midweek sessions, so most likely the Thursday session or potentially the Tuesday session, and replace that with some sort of non-weight bearing cardio. So perhaps getting onto a bike, be that a bike in the gym or getting out on a road bike and starting to actually take the same amount of time you'd be out. So let's say we've got one of these, um, you know, let's say a midweek kind of six mile run here, then perhaps we're looking at a mile, uh, an hour, an hour and a half out on the bike instead of the run. So ultimately we're looking to get you out four times in the week, but three of them can be a run or four of them could be a run. Now, as we're going through these weeks, you'll see that the mileage increases. That, of course, is intentional. You can see the weekly mileage here on the side. It increases, but it's not one straight line from here increasing up to the point of race day. We're taking this in waves, and you can see that we've got these easier weeks, easier weeks laid out in the program, and of course the taper week down here. We'll talk about taper in a second, but these easier weeks are really important. Again, one of the reasons people get injured is that they simply push themselves too hard for too long and they progress their running at a rate faster than their body can actually recover from each individual run and the running volume um, cumulatively. So the way I like to do this is we get you running for, again, two weeks or three weeks, depending on where you are in the program, and then we take a week where we step back, we take that easier week, you're still running the same number of times per week, but the running volume, the training load is less. And then at the end of that week, you're ready to go again. The next week you can push harder, and every time we hit a higher peak in terms of your running fitness, it allows your body to recover as we work through the 16 weeks, rather than getting more and more and more and more and more stressed as you go. So these easier weeks are absolutely essential. 
Now, of course, when it comes to your long run, the vast majority of marathon training plans, or you could almost go as far as to say all marathon training plans, are really built around the long run. Again, traditionally, we often talk about the long Sunday run equally. It could go anywhere in your week. Um, again, you just shuffle your week around that long run. I tend to only take first-time marathoners up to 18 miles as their longest long run. And that's intentional. And I know a lot of you watching this, having looked at other marathon programs, may look at that and think, wow, that's actually not a lot at all. I go into that in detail in some of the, the literature at the end of this, this document, um, again, as we scroll through, which we will do later. But for me, what's really important is, again, getting you to the start line injury free. It's where we get people who they hit the 14, 16, 18 mile long run marks. That's where we start to see things like ITB syndrome, shin splints, high hamstring tendinopathy, um, Achilles problems. Again, they're the kind of the, the critical times. And if we can just begin to mitigate that a little bit by focusing a little bit more on weekly mileage rather than pushing the long runs longer, longer and longer, then that's going to help you look after your body and help you get to the start line injury free. Of course, you need the preparation in your legs. Of course, you need to be ready for the 26.2 miles on marathon day. But believe me, once you hit around about that kind of three and a half hour mark, a lot of the time, for your long run, for some people it's three hours, for some people it's four hours. Again, we're all different in terms of our tolerance, but you hit a point of diminishing returns. You hit a point where going any longer than that, you're going to start getting little niggles, start getting more fatigue than you would do otherwise, or if you stopped short, obviously that's, that's obvious, but more fatigue, which your body then can't recover from before you then start pushing into the next training week. You get to a point where if you're going too long in your long runs, you end up suffering and compromising on the quality of the training in the following week. Now, of course, we see marathon training plans with 20 milers, 22 milers as the long run. And if you're a three hour marathoner, three hour 15 marathoner, something like that, then getting out and doing a 20 mile run isn't going to take you anywhere near as long as if you're a slower runner and you are looking to, again, go and do a 20, uh, 20 mile run. It's going to take you a lot longer. And this is why, as we can see here, um, we uh, let's find the, uh, the specific week I'm talking about. We put for those long Sunday runs both a specific time and or distance limit to, to it. So we say for that Sunday run in week 10, for example, it's an 18 mile long slow run or three and a half hours, depending on what comes first. Okay, so this program is written for people of all paces. And if you are a slower runner, you know, again, an 18 miles feels like it's gonna take longer than three and a half hours, feel free to cut it at that three and a half hours and know that the big thing that really will determine your success on marathon day isn't the length of the longest run you've done, it's the weekly mileage and the consistency in the legs. Trust me, when you get to that point, 20 miles and beyond, it's gonna be hard, firstly, it's gonna be hard for everybody, but secondly, there's gonna be a lot of adrenaline, a lot of crowd support, it is gonna be tough, but you're going to find that you're able to, to push on a lot further than you expect, um, especially you know, given the fact that you've got those you know, 16, 18, a couple of times through long runs in the, uh, in the bank, you don't need to do your full marathon distance in training or even close to it in training. That's a big preconception that a lot of people just, just get wrong. Um, they, they don't get that until they've done this process of working through marathon training. Now, as we work through the program, you'll notice as well that I haven't put a lot of speed work in this program. Again, the focus here for your uh, first time marathon I really should be about building mileage, building time on the feet. But the one type of intensity based work I put in here is a little bit of tempo work and throwing a little bit of hill training in there. Where I'm not getting you to do hard speed intervals or anything like that, I like to think of hill work as kind of speed work in disguise. Hey, that's not my quote, that's something that someone else said once, but I love the term kind of speed work in disguise. It does a great job of, again, helping you to build a little bit of strength, a little bit of speed in the, in the legs without putting your body through the same kind of intensity as you would do with a, let's say, a hard track session or something like that. 
Now, what I wanted to point out, and I want to try and keep this relatively short, um, is that there are various sections to do with your training towards the back end of this document as well. So we've got sections on goal setting, we've got sections on finding your training pace, we've got sections on heart rate training, which isn't a prerequisite, you don't have to use a heart rate monitor. Some people like to, it's a really effective training tool. Again, I also think on the other side of that coin that learning to run by feel is also really important. So by all means, take a look at that. Workout details for your long, slow run, for your easy Saturday run, for your midweek, mid -pa uh, easy paced run, and your hilly tempo runs, they're all in there. The detail is all very much laid out, so you literally follow step by step, and it'll get you through to marathon, marathon day in one piece and ready to go. We talk about the half marathon training run, um, or training race rather, and of course, what to do when life gets in the way. Are you going to completely lose it when inevitably work or in illness or hopefully not injury gets in the way. What are you going to do? Are you going to try and play catch up? Because that, trust me, this, I mean, spoiler here, catch up is the worst thing you could possibly play. Whereas on the other side of things, if you know which sessions are the most important sessions, you know which you can focus on, which you can reschedule and which you can just let go. Because in the big scheme of things, if you've got a chest, uh, a chest infection or a head cold or something like that, letting it go, not playing catch up, focusing on your recovery will allow you to jump straight back into marathon training a lot more effectively than if you start stressing about these things. Again, far more detail there for you. And again, race day pacing strategy, nutrition and hydration. We've got a great talk here from elite runner Tina Muir. Again, if you don't know about Tina's podcast, check out Running For Real. Um, and... There's just so much information. You've even got a Facebook group to, again, lend support along your journey. So big old document here. Lots and lots of information for you to take away and use. And it will guide you step by step through the process of training for your first marathon. So go down into the description on this video. Click the link. Go and pick up a copy. Even if you're not sure about it, grab a copy of the program because it's completely free. Um, and then make sure you download those free strength programs as well, which will, uh, again, help you build strength and get there injury-free, ready to go and have a great day on Marathon Day. Okay, this was only meant to be a quick little overview, so I wanted to give you that to check out. I'll see you in the next video. Best of luck with your training.